For the next installment in the series, I'm just gonna show off some applications. So this is gonna be a fairly quick one. I'll just show some different applications that I think are cool. These are the applications I want to highlight. They are general productivity applications and they can all be installed through uh, the package manager either, either in directly from the repository or through AUR. So they can all be installed with the A command. Here we have the package names in case you want to install them. They, as I said, all can be installed from the A command except the text pieces package. And I'll show you how to install that in a moment. The first application is Rnode. So this is what we see here. It's a simple note taking application where you can draw stuff and it can also act as a digital whiteboard. Next we have text pieces. Uh, so this is installed a bit differently from the others. We can install it through the software app and just search for text pieces. So this tool is, is super neat to convert between various text formats. For instance, I got a JSON file loaded up here and we can see a list of all the things it can do. It can base 64 encoded, base 64 decoded, count lines, uh, remove duplicate lines, escape HTML characters and prettify all sorts of stuff. Um, we can also use it to convert to YAML. So this is what I'm going to show. Just click that and it converts. So this is really neat for doing sort of text conver conversion stuff. You can probably also find web applications. You do all these things, but having a desktop application just saves you from having to do a Google search each time. The next application is Pandoc CLI. It is a command line tool used to convert uh, between different document formats. So say you take notes in in Markdown. So I got a Markdown file here. And then let me show you how you can use Pandoc to convert to different formats. So I have the Markdown file here called readme markdown. Um, and if I type pandoc hyphen o, o for output, and then the file name of the output file I want to convert it to. Here I'm gonna convert this markdown file to a readme docx. So it's basically a word file. You can also convert markdown to PDFs and all sorts of other formats. If you're using the uh, PDF conversion feature of Pandoc, then it requires you to install something called Text Live as well. That brings us to the next application, OnlyOffice. So OnlyOffice is simply a replacement for Microsoft Office. We can take a look at the text document I converted before, before with Pandoc, and we get an output like this. OnlyOffice can also be used as a replacement for Excel and PowerPoint. Next application that's a good chance you heard of before is called GIMP and it's really good for lightweight image manipulation. So I've got a file open in GIMP here. Uh, we've got various tools to draw and resize and clone other stuff. And we can make text. Uh, it allows you to work in layers and you also got various brushes up here. You've got different effects you can add onto stuff. It's no Photoshop, but for lightweight work and for yeah, what I use, it's plenty, plenty fine. Next up is OBS. OBS is a sc screen recording software. You see it here. Uh, this is what I use to make these videos. So this application is also use, used by streamers. You set up various scenes if you have multiple web cameras. Um, you can show yourself from different angles and switch between with hotkeys. There's even, I think, a, a mobile application that you can use to control some of the stuff. So 
if you want open source broadcasting software or if you're a streamer uh, or if you just need to do some screen recording this is a really good tool to edit your videos a good option is ptv i don't know how to pronounce it uh, but it's a simply video editing application so i got it here this is what i use to edit these videos um, it's fairly simple but you can have clips in different layers and you can create uh, text on top you can add transitions and some effects when you're done with your project you hit render and it outputs um, a final video you can choose various options for quality and so on for simple video editing this is really cool for advanced use cases or for, pro for professional use there's a version of DaVinci Resolve for Linux, though um, the free version is sort of limited, otherwise it's, it, it costs money. So this is the only thing I'm showing that actually costs anything. Last application I want to show is GNOME Boxes. GNOME Boxes uh, can be used to create virtual machines. You might have seen that in one of my previous videos where I did a Linux installation. By launching GNOME Boxes, um, you get an empty screen. If you click the plus, you can install, download and install an operating system. So you've got a huge list of, of predefined already. If you have an ISO that's not on the list, you can install it from here. And then you simply just select your ISO. Um, you can change the resources and then create your virtual machine. So here we got virtual machine fully booted. Uh, so this is really neat to test out a different operating system, your application on different operating systems. You can use it to try out uh, other desktop environments and so on. Also, another use case is if you have this one application that you still absolutely need on Windows, then you can just create a Windows virtual machine. You can find our source for download uh, from Microsoft web page and then you can install that in a virtual machine. So the interface for GNOME boxes is pretty simple but it's using some powerful technology under the hood. Something called K, uh, QEMO and KVM. If you need a bit more options, if you have more advanced use cases then you can use this thing called Word Manager which has a lot of more options that you can really play around with all the power of QEMO and KVM. That's it for my applications list. Everything you saw and I talked about is at DaVinci. It's free and open source software, so there's no advertising in it and it's free to install. You can download the source code for the applications, play around with them, see how they work, learn from it and maybe do your own modifications if you so desire. There's a lot more open source software out there for you to discover.